David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Today I have a pen that was a grail pen for me. And since it's a pen that's not readily available, that search took quite some time, uh, which made the acquisition all that more satisfying when I was finally able to locate one. And that pen is the Omos My Lord Arco Brown Celluloid. Um, what I'm gonna do is go over some of the parts and the features of the My Lord, talk about what I care for, what I don't care for, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. Uh, you know, I talked about this almost a year ago while I was reviewing another Omas pen, but uh, Omas was founded back in 1925 in Bologna, Italy by Armando Simoni. Uh, and Omas is actually an acronym and it stands for Officina Mechanica Armando Simoni. Uh, and Officina Mechanica translates from Italian as Mechanics Workshop. Um, Armando was fond of Greek culture and he translated that passion into many of his pen designs. Uh, and the one we will look at today is included in that. Um, an early Omas success was actually a, a pen designed for doctors, which was uh, fitted with a tiny clinical thermometer in the body, body of the pen. Uh, now, in early 2016, Omas produced its last pen and shut its doors, uh, but that might not be the last we hear from the brand, and I'll talk about that uh, a bit later in the review. Uh, the pen arrived in this box. It has a, a black sleeve with silver lettering, and then when you remove the sleeve, the lid of the box is silver with black lettering. Uh, the lid lifts off and inside the box uh, it's made of uh, kind of a soft and shimmery gray suede like material um, this side actually has one tray uh, but if you turn the insert over uh, it actually has two trays and beneath the insert there is uh, a little booklet which goes over some of the Omas company history uh, and then some of the care and use for their pens. Uh, and also included is a nice little pen sleeve made out of the same material as the inside of the box. And inside the sleeve we have the pen. The Omas My Lord Arco Brown Celluloid. Um, this pen is made from Omas's Arco Celluloid. Uh, celluloid is more durable than the hard rubber of early fountain pens, but really less durable than many of the modern plastics. Um, celluloid pens were really popular back in the 1920s, but by the 1940s they had been replaced by acrylics and injection molded plastics. Um, celluloid has a very nice warm feeling in the hand, but the material itself is rather unstable and has a tendency to, to discolor over time. Uh, in addition, it, it can be extremely flammable. Uh, it takes a lengthy time to manufacture celluloid. Uh, you know, I was actually speaking with uh, Sean Newton uh, about celluloid and the manufacturing process, and he said that right now there's a lot of celluloid coming out of China, but it is thinner material that uh, is made for things like eyeglass frames rather than pens. But it can be a solvent wel welded together into blocks, which can be used for pens. Um, existing bars of high quality celluloid are extremely valuable and uh, very coveted by pen makers. Um, let's start at the cap. Uh, the end of the cap has a bit of a point to it and has a gold circle which resembles the O in Omas. Um, then we have this very nice curved clip which has a wheel here at the end. Um, this particular wheel operates very well. Um, I have other clips with wheel designs that don't work so well but this one is, uh, is very nice and the wheel makes uh, the pocketing of this pen very very smooth. Uh, the cap angles up slightly to a wide faceted cap band and on the band it is engraved with Omas then it has a Greek key design, and then it says Italy, where the pen was manufactured. Uh, there is a very small step down to the barrel, which tapers down a bit to a thin gold ring, and then transitions to a piston knob. And the end of the piston knob has a bit of a point to it, mirroring, mirroring the shape that's on the end of the cap. Um, there are 12 facets on this barrel as well as the cap uh, as well as the piston knob and I like having the piston knob faceted since it helps you uh, grip the pen a bit better when inking up or cleaning the pen. Um, the way this material is cut makes it appear kind of like there's a main larger facet. I'm not sure how well that gets picked up there but it kind of looks like there's a main larger facet uh, to the pen but that's not the case. Each of the facets are the same size. Uh, you know I'm a typically a fan of silver or rhodium trim, but um, 
I really think that that would look out of place on this pen. I feel the gold trim really complements this pen perfectly. Um, I just love this Arco Celluloid. I think it is just stunning. Um, just look at the way the, ref the light reflects off the uh, sides of the materials. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, you can really see the different layers of this material. And, you know, I like that this material really varies from pen to pen. So no two pens with this celluloid will look the same. Each is going to have their own look and own personality. The cap twists off to reveal this 18 karat gold nib. Uh, I think it's beautiful. Uh, it's stamped with Omas sideways on the nib, which uh, you don't see a great deal, the writing sideways like that. Then it's stamped with uh, 18K 750, which means this nib has a gold content of 75%, and then M for medium. And then here's a look at the low profile ebonite feed, uh, and then also a look at it in the uh, magnifying glass. I just like the way ebonite looks, especially in the magnifying glass. The section begins with a faceted gold band, which I really like. Um, it fits well with the faceted design of the pen. Um, the section, however, is not faceted, which uh, it's rather straight for about half an inch and then angles up slightly. Uh, and, and I think that that works best for this pen. I don't find the threads to be uh, sharp at all. Uh, and the cap does snap to post which is nice uh, and a bit unexpected for a pen like this. Um, posting does, however, kind of throw the balance off of this pen, so I typically don't use it uh, posted. Uh, and it is plenty long enough to use comfortably. Um, the My Lord is a piston filler. Uh, I find the piston to operate smoothly, uh, and the pen has a decent ink capacity. Uh, it does not, however, have an ink window, which really doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm not sure how the best way would be to incorporate an ink window into this pen. While it would be nice to be aware of the ink level, uh, it doesn't bother me at all on this pen. Um, what does bug me about this pen a little bit is that there are multiple threads in the cap so that the layered material on the barrel doesn't always line up with the layers on the cap like that. There are three different rotations to have, so I find myself uh, capping and uncapping and recapping the pen a few times in order to get the alignment like that that I want. Um, another thing is that on this specific pen, when you do get the threads right, once the cap is affixed, the eye alignment is off just by a couple of degrees. It's tough to see there, but it's just off just slightly. And if you perfectly line it up, then the cap is a bit too loose. Um, also, when the piston knob on this pen is tightened all the way, it's it's just misaligned by a, a degree or two as well. Now, that one you can kind of slightly uh, adjust and, and it looks OK, but these are very small things. Um, now, I know this is a small issue, but it's the small issues like that that kind of irk me. Now, the Omas My Lord is, uh, especially in this Arco celluloid, is not cheap. Um, I've been on the lookout for one of these for a very long time, and I just couldn't find one. Um, then when I could find one, it would be at a price range that I really didn't feel comfortable with. Um, at one point, I had a retailer who was willing to part with one of these out of their personal collection for $1,200. Uh, it was a gorgeous pen with gold, road, war, uh, gold, gold excuse me, rose gold trim, but I just couldn't do it. And... Uh, uh, I don't think he was really that anxious to sell it, which is why he priced it where he did. Uh, so I kept looking and eventually found a new one, which I was able to pick up for $800. Um, I would consider this pen worthy to be called a grail pen. Uh, in order to be called or to be a grail pen, you know, I don't think that it simply needs to be expensive. Uh, now that can make a pen more difficult to acquire, but that's just a small contributing factor. I, I like the fact that it was difficult to find. Uh, it makes the pen that much more special for me because I know how long I, I looked for one. And if I was able to just go out to any retail site and pick one up, uh, it still would be an amazing pen. But adding that level of difficulty and acquisition makes the Mylord Arco a little more special to me. Uh, now, last week I reviewed the Pilot 823, and in that review I talked about how the nib and the feed on my particular 823 just never quite performed too well. And I had the, virtually the same issue with this My Lord. There was just something about the ink flow or the nib or the feed just couldn't keep up, and I was really disappointed. I worked so hard to get this pen and paid a lot for it, uh, but wrote, it wrote inconsistently uh, the, so much that it almost made it unusable. And I had a couple of reputable folks work on it at pen shows and just like the 823 it would 
perform well for a while, but then kind of revert back to its old ways. Uh, I sent this pen off, as well as the 823 off to uh, Mike Matsuyama, and he did just wonders for both. Um, I, I use this pen a lot, and ever since getting it back from Mike, I haven't had a hard start or a skip or reduced ink flow of any kind whatsoever. I, I can't speak highly enough about his work. Now, if you do send a pen off to Mike, be prepared to be without it for a couple of months. He does have quite a backlog of work, uh, but it's well worth the wait and the investment. Now. Omas isn't quite dead yet. Uh, this past year, the company was uh, purchased with the intention of selling it off uh, and selling off the existing stock and producing new pens. And this was big news around the time of the DC show this year. Um, but I haven't really heard much about it lately. Uh, if you want to read more about the downfall of Omas, the, uh, the Pen Economics blog written by Jonathan Deans has an excellent post on the financial issues of, um, that Omas was experiencing before it's closing down. Um, it's a very well-researched and comprehensive article which contains a ton of information information about what ultimately led to the demise of the brand. Um, and it's very much worth the read. Um, I'll put a link to it in the notes below the video. But in regard to this pen, uh, it, it is just spectacular. It looks amazing. It writes fantastic. Uh, and that uh, it's something in my collection that was truly worthy to be called a grail pen. So, okay, now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and then a writing sample. So here we go with some size comparisons for the Omas Malord Arco Celluloid. Um, here it is in comparison with another reddish brown pen, which is the Wall Eversharp Deco Band. Then another brown pen, which is the uh, LB5. And then here it is with a Pilot 823. And then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Lamy All-Star. Uh, then here it is with a Retro 51. And then here it is with a Pilot Prera. And here we go with the writing sample. What we have here is the Omas, my lord, Arco, celluloid. And this is a medium nib. And the ink I'm using today is Franklin Kristoff. Terra firma. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Uh, it's a really nice reddish brown. Uh, here it is in comparison to Faber-Castell hazelnut brown uh, and even the Mont Blanc toffee brown. So you can see that it's a bit redder than those, uh, but I like all three browns, but I think right now terra firma is my favorite brown in my collection. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like. I like the shape of these bottles. Really makes it really easy to get some of the larger nibs in there and get out all the ink and ink it correctly uh, and easily. So here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, the work, like I mentioned, that Mike Matsuyama did on this nib uh, it made it just sing. It's really, really fantastic. You can get a bit of line variation out of here um, with a little to so no pressure and then adding some. You can see that you can get some pressure or some uh, ink flow out of here uh, or line variation rather. And in regard to ink flow, um, that uh, before it was very inconsistent, uh, but Mike did a really good job of increasing that. And in regard to uh, reverse writing, Uh, it's a little on the scratchy side, but it does lay down an extra, extra fine line. And in regard to fast writing,
there's no problem at all. And this is where the pen would really have issues, uh, that it, uh, it really wouldn't keep up, and especially on the side strokes, would, uh, uh, would not lay down any ink whatsoever. So here we have the Omas Malord Arco Celluloid. It is really one of my favorite pens in my collection. I think it's uh, just stunningly beautiful uh, and, and truly worthy to be called a Grail pen. So thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you later.